Hydra Scope and Six Blades. I'm going to do is some pretty quick kind of video. I'm just going to run and gun it. Um, this is regarding the incoming and what was done with the zombie knife law uh, from sort of July and is coming big up with the in September. So, anyway, now you hopefully will remember that when the consultation went through, I was imploring everybody in order to um, put on there the high end, high value, handmade blades would be retained and there'll be defences about it and I've tried to get in contact with a few people uh, like the new um, what is was the old Chris Philp which is the uh, crime policing and fire guy um, it's a strange collaboration of, of, of different departments um, and obviously I was going through uh, Jacob Reese Mogg now we've got a new liberal uh, MP in I haven't got a response from her yet um, and so I'm reaching out again to the new version of Chris Philp, is a lady called Diana Johnson, I think it is, um, who is the crime, fire and policing. Because what we're after is the admission, the recognition in any way uh, for handmade um, and high end. Now, if you remember, I used this knife as an example. Now, this actually gets through on exemption for another little thing, which is very interesting. And that is sections of serrations along with a plain edge. If the serration near the handle is less than two inches. So, the Shrade SCF2, my Shrade has a serrated section of less than two inches so he goes through he's also a discontinued high value blade so you know okay the average rambo blade cheap crap you saw inset on the video i put a thing i've ground those teeth off they're just literally bumps now so they're like jimping so i've gone through all my kit now what I am trying to do is retain blades such as that and also parry blades which have a really intricate um, blade profile and I was on the interwebs this morning uh, saw that gear guy his stuff generally on the on the money um, unfortunately on the internet I can't find surprise surprise I've just spent a good hour trying to find home office admitting that there will be da -da 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 -da, specific exemptions being made specific exemptions for legitimate articles such as objects of historical importance or those that are handmade in order to avoid negative impacts on the antiques market and british made industries that rely on top end high value blades that are highly unlikely to end up in the hands of criminals a Mel Parry blade is not a cheap blade. It's not mass produced. It was that kind of blade that I was trying to fall into the specific exemptions, specific exemption made for legitimate articles of historical importance. Mel Parry blade is a British made production blade a chris kane blade a lofty wiseman blade they have their part within british industry okay th th those are the things i was trying to do it to idea now fortunately the mel parry blade has a quite a long section of serrations so if you were you could always either grind a bit off so it's less than two inches or make it a plain edge so if you had a parry and you were a little bit ginger about it you could edge it. But I've reached out again to Diana Johnson and here's my email. Dear Diana, I've left her, I'll leave her email underneath and the link to what I stated in the thing. Now, a guy who collects something like SA80 bayonets, they're an ugly looking thing, but it's of historical military importance. And legitimacy so 
he sent a letter August of last year to Chris Philp to try and say, now, hello, hello, could you make sure that these get on the system, like, you know, that these are recognised, that have some form of legitimacy and are, can be retained and they've got some defence within it. So the letter one. Anyway. Dear Diana, thank you for your time. Having been repeatedly instrumental in previous knives and weapons legislation and consultations, I'm reaching out for clarifications that as stated by the previous government, there will be allowances due to, quote, considered responses from individuals, manufacturers, retailers and trade organisations that rely on bladed items. Specific exemptions will be made for legitimate articles such as objects, such as, but not limited to, such as, okay, not limited to, such as objects of historical importance and, and those that are handmade in order to avoid negative impacts on the antiques market, market and British made industries. British made is the Chris Kane stuff, unless it's made of Scorpion, right? Chris Kane, um, stuff that are made by the stuff in Birmingham and Sheffield and all that. British made industries, now Parry, Lofty Wiseman. Right, that rely on top end high value blades that are highly unlikely to end up in the hands of criminals. They're expensive. Basically, so unquote, this is now me speaking again. Basically, many suppliers, manufacturers, sole traders, bladesmiths, some now doing weapons for film in Hollywood. I hear Raven are, are doing something for some TV or film or something, are making high end work which should be exempt from the morass of cheap, poor material-based zombie knives and cheap machetes, which only serve to intimidate with very little practical function. The cheap, fat, stingless zombie. We don't mind losing that. So, I fear I'm finding only the most basic descriptions anywhere online. I couldn't find this stuff. And in the media, leaving many of us in severe doubt that the respect for high-end, high-value, collectible, traditional, military, etc., etc., will be retained, and as such, these valuable items will be stricken from their owners. Unless you wish to dismiss months of work from our community trying to work with Chris Philp MP. As yet, I am unaware of you reaching out to us. Please could you clarify and direct me to the relevant sections within the new law as I am as yet unable to find the rele relevant original sections as per the Home Office and Minister for Crime, Police and Fire the right on what Chris Philp MP published 30th of August 2023. Regarding these items, clearly stated these points and here is a colleague's letter from last year. So, I've given a link to this guy that was in a, um, a Baynet uh, collecting group form or whatever. Um, and he's looking for clarifications. Like, you, you, yeah, yeah, you. you, you. Alright? Because what I don't want is for them to just go, <laughs> and it's just out of range, it's just restoration place, it's got holes in it, it's just like, and everything gets lost. You know, I know I'm going to keep this by the look of it because the serrated section is less than two inches. Really, a serrated section anyway. But what we don't want is to be run roughshod over once again. So, once again, into the four. I'll leave links underneath. Leave your comments, and obviously keep it polite and whatever but generally on the lines of the comments usually is this ain't gonna do anything is you know again anyway it's got Wessex blades out trying to get some response from government again <sighs> good fun out thanks Wessex blades out see you on the next one